More streaming from home options this week, starting with Irresistible, and everyone is going for the low-hanging fruit pun of it's resistible. It's not just resistible, it's bad. And it's bad, and it's disappointing, and it's so frustrating because it is written and directed by Jon Stewart of The Daily Show, who, for me at least, was a huge formative figure in terms of my sense of humor about political comedy, in terms of actual news delivery and delivering tough news in a palatable way that was entertaining, but also did not let anybody off the hook. And so to see this, you know, not translate out of his clear skills and talent is it's pretty disappointing it stars steve carell a daily show alumni from john's time rose byrne chris cooper natasha leone topher grace and steve carell plays a democratic consultant i want to say and it takes place right now during the current administration and you know it, it takes place centering around the 2016 election a little bit after and it was just like oh this is too soon and obviously this film in, went into production at whatever point and maybe we didn't expect the world to be in such shambles right now when this came out but it it's just like you know hitting people while they're down the other thing is like i don't know who this movie is for like it felt too on the nose like one of my favorite things about the the humor and satire of the daily show when john stewart was involved was it was on the nose but it was also like clever and this is not clever um and i don't know who's gonna watch this right like it's certainly probably for a more liberal skewing audience it takes place in middle america and so i was like is the idea behind this to show Maybe those people who are kind of in um, neutral or swing states or on the fence, like there is sanity on the other side of it. But I don't think anybody is going to watch it from those groups. I don't think anybody's going to watch it, period. Or if you're going to watch it, you're going to watch it because you saw Jon Stewart's name on it and you were falsely advertised quality wise. So Steve Carell plays a Democratic consultant. He ends up going to this small town to kind of oversee a mayoral race from a guy who should have been a Republican, um, but, you know, is is actually more liberal leaning and then it just gets really convoluted from there and there's a whole rivalry with rose burns character who plays the republican consultant from the other side and just the characters are just not sympathetic their arcs are limited if that i like i like all the people involved in this uh, maybe neutral on topher gracie's whatever but i just it was such a squandering of talent and nothing makes me sadder than well not nothing but in terms of films like this nothing makes me sadder than squandering of talent I think also it thinks it's trying to be more clever than it is at the end. And I know it's ca- – that's the other thing. Again, frustration, disappointment. I know it's capable of being clever. I just – I don't know what went wrong in this process. This doesn't tarnish my love for Jon Stewart. This doesn't tarnish my appreciation for his tenure on The Daily Show and you know all of the political – I still think like – you hear him doing interviews about this movie and you're like, oh, you're still as sharp as ever. So was it that the amount of time that production takes and it takes to get a movie done just kind of like dimmed the zestiness of your, your – general sense of humor or it got caught up in too many edits or whatever it may be but there was something about the delay and just the quality overall of it that was disappointing so for irresistible i'm only going to give it 1.9 out of 5 and then moving on to Eurovision Song Contest, the story of the Fire Saga, which is something I was actually really looking forward to. If you are an American, you might not be familiar with Eurovision. I certainly was not familiar until one of my close friends who happens to be from the UK introduced me to it. And it's basically, a, you know, multi-day, but there's usually at least one day of finals long uh, song contest. Uh, but all of Europe competes. Also Australia, question mark. Uh, some other countries have been given weird leave to participate in it. The songs are just absurd. And I'm not referring to the songs in the Eurovision Song Contest movie. I'm referring to the actual songs of Eurovision. And there are some actually very famous acts that have come out of Eurovision. Celine Dion was a participant. ABBA, Waterloo was a winner. Uh, So, you know, there are some actual popular things that have come out about it. And then, you know, some of the drinking games that you play during Eurovision are like... You drink every time there's fireworks indoors. It takes place indoors. Every time there's fireworks. Every time there's people wearing traditional garb. Anytime anybody's in all white. Anytime, you know, Vikings come on stage. It's just, it's fun. It's ridiculous. It's it's a, it's a once a year extravaganza that as Americans, I don't feel like, I feel like we missed out on. And I feel like we would ruin if we participated in. So that being said, this movie stars Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams, who very american they play icelandic singers who somehow get into the eurovision song contest and the movie clocks in 
at two hours. This movie does not need to be two hours long. It gets bogged down in parts. I think my favorite parts are the ones that are probably going to be funniest if you are familiar with the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, you know, Graham Norton, who actually hosts or does the voiceover for Eurovision, appears in this. There's a lot of jokes about how voting works in Eurovision. They do a very good job of parodying, but also paying homage to Eurovision acts with all the fictional acts within the uh, Netflix movie. And I will also say, like, there are a couple sequences where I'm like, oh, this is just a cameo sequence. This is an excuse to get people who have participated in Eurovision to be in this before. And as someone who came to Eurovision very late, I was like, okay, I recognize like two of these people. I'm going to go ahead and assume that the rest of them are all affiliated. I feel like it's a good background watch. And there are some very Will Ferrell moments. Will Ferrell wrote it with Andrew Steele. And, you know, there are some moments where I'm like, oh, this, this could be in any Will Ferrell movie, right? Like this joke about whatever. These runners of jokes could be in Talladega Nights or Old School or anything like that. But it's still enjoyable. So I feel like um, if you are familiar with Eurovision, you might be disappointed by some of the slogging kind of more American centric parts. If you are not familiar with Eurovision, you might not understand some of the nuances or the jokes, the in jokes related to the actual Eurovision song contest parts. So it's kind of in this weird middle ground in between. But I feel like if you are vaguely familiar with both or you're fine with it, like it's a fine background watch. And I feel like you will perk up at the parts that are going to be interesting and you are not going to miss anything plot wise if you just kind of like, I don't know, clean your house or whatever it is in the interim. So in that sense, like it's not the most successful thing. I wanted it to be much funnier. I wanted it to be tighter, but I didn't hate it. So I'm going to give it 2.7 out of 5. And then finally, I have Disclosure, which is a documentary on Netflix, which I feel like should probably be mandatory viewing for everyone at this point. It's a look at the depiction of transgender people in the media. And I learned so much from this documentary. And it's not a long documentary. It's 100 minutes long, right? And I feel guilty for not knowing a lot of this stuff but I also understand why I didn't know this stuff because there's been a lot of erasure there's been a ton of erasure of trans people of color you know I I think if you are following the conversation right now like it's impossible to ignore that the statistics about you know trans women uh, trans black women and the murder rates basically and the danger it is to just exist as a trans person of color there are tons of moments in this which are just absolutely heartbreaking and I think there were a lot of points that actually were really applicable to any sort of minority representation in the media. And one point I love was having there be more than one representative. So if you have one clumsy representation of something, it's not going to set everything back, right? Just to cite something I talk about a lot. If you have one crazy rich Asians, that's amazing. But then you have one clumsy one, like you have enough buffers in between that it, you know, the clumsy one isn't going to set back the ability to produce a future crazy rich Asians. Or for Black Panther, let's say when the movie came out, like if that had not been spectacular, then I feel like it would have set back the possibility to have Black superheroes for time to come or same goes for wonder woman right so if you have more narrative plentitude then you are safer from this misconceptions and the ability to produce media around this also i there's such a good point in this documentary about like they, they hate the idea of disclosure because it, there shouldn't be it presupposes there's anything to disclose and i was like oh wow they talk about the focus on surgery being such a, a thing that people focus on which really shouldn't be the focus there's the idea of laughing at people versus laughing with people in terms of representation in the media it was just, it was really insightful really hard to watch in some senses but also it's not out to guilt you but you know hopefully in a sense you will feel a sense of guilt because that will hopefully lead to you changing and i say a lot to people like put your money where your mouth is if you are not necessarily a filmmaker yourself like maybe you're not producing the content okay well support things that are authentic and produced by people of color or produced by trans people in terms of trans representation. I, I think the end is also kind of optimistic and I'm hoping that people can change. So please go I flock to this film. There's no reason if you don't have Netflix not to watch it. So I'm going to give it 4.6 out of 5.